recording. Hey guys, all right, sorry about that. Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I have a video uh, for you today. This is one of many in the uh, little series I'm doing for Scott from Boulder, Colorado. Scott and I have become uh, good friends over the last year that we've been working on this stuff together. And uh, I'm really excited to present it to you today. So if you wanna see a really quick recap video showing all of the sheaths uh, really quickly, so you don't have to sit through all these individual uh, videos, then please go check out the recap video before warned. It's about 30 minutes long, but there are quite a few little projects here to uh, check out. So uh, in this one, I'm gonna be showing you an in-depth look at two non-knife options. Um, these guys are a hatchet and a camp saw, a folding saw. So what we have here is a still, brand still hatchet. Um, this guy is in multicam, and Scott asked me if I could put some molly locks on it. Uh, so what I did here was I created this rugged floated plate on the back with multiple rows of drill holes. What that allows you to do is move your molly locks over into different widths and different lateral positions. You also obviously have the option of orienting it this way if for whatever reason that suits your purposes better, uh, carrying it on your pack. Uh, but those molly locks will be able to fit... Um, <clears throat> multiple spans and multiple positions laterally. Um, the drill holes are set up in three quarter inch increments and that allows you to place them at proper molly intervals. So molly webbing is actually an inch and a half from center to center on each of the loops as you go across a row of it. So what we have here is an inch and a half spacing and if you're going to keep it compatible with molly webbing you can also move this guy over to this row to make it three inches. Um, obviously, if you go beyond that, <clears throat> you're gonna lose your uh, your compatibility with the molly. So you wanna keep it at an inch and a half or three inches, and then you can also move it over so you could have this spacing in several positions or the, inch, or the three inches in two different positions. Um, as far as how this guy <coughs> Excuse me. As far as how this guy comes out of its sheath, all you have to do is spread the back there and you kind of push the handle forward to get the back of the hatchet to pop out there. Once you have it there, you can kind of just muscle it out. It's not too hard to do. Um, you're just going to have to overcome a little bit of the friction that's created by this flare out on both sides of the blade. Putting it back in, you have to deal with. <clears throat> The aggressive flaring of the butt of the uh, the head of this axe so as you put it back in it's gonna feel like it wants to stop there so what I do is just put it in until it stops and then I give it a little bit of a hammer against my palm and that just sends it the rest of the way home so I promise it's not oops, butterfingers it's not that hard to draw if you do it slowly it feels difficult but as you uh, as you just draw it quickly there's no issue and then putting it back in is as simple as that. So we got that still hatchet. And we also have <coughs> a Silky Ultra Excel folding saw. This thing is pretty cool. If you guys haven't checked them out, I would definitely recommend you go check out some Silky saws. Um, I didn't realize you could lock it out in that position. I'm not really sure if you, that's the position you'd most likely want to use this in. It's pretty long. I'm not sure how long that blade is. I would guess that's a foot. It's got to be in the ballpark of 12 inch uh, saw blade there and really cool locking mechanism almost like a uh, almost like a, uh, a slip joint knife or a lock back or what's the what's cold steel call theirs? I can't remember. The try something. I don't remember. Anyway um, it's a nice little uh, saw we got here with a rubberized handle. And Scott asked me if I could build him a sheath that would carry it on a nylon dangler, mollies, and then also have a second D-ring in addition to the dangler D-ring uh, where he could clip in and wear it as a baldric system on a sling. So it's a cool option we've got there. Uh, basically, I did a build out with this thing. So you can see, I should have taken a picture of it. <clears throat> but when I uh, when I was getting ready to press this, I realized that these nubs on both sides here and here were going to create really, really 
problematic retention spots, like too much retention, um, because the rest of this is so narrow and having this wide spot up here to pull through all that narrow material would be just about impossible or impossible to do uh, comfortably and make the sheath more or less garbage in my opinion. So uh, what I did was I used leather and uh, different pieces of craft wood like popsicle sticks and tongue depressors and I created a build out which means I taped some things in position to automatically when I form the sheath create the contour that would allow those fat spots to pass through just about unimpeded. So you can see there's a a taper here, a taper here, uh, not a taper, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? A channel, a channel for that to go through. And the same thing behind the molly locks, you can't really see it, but there's a similar kind of thing going on. So obviously you can see that lines up like so. And you just slide that in. So there is just a little bit of play because there's not the same kind of uh, contour <clears throat> to work with as you would with a knife. But the play is only really forward and backward into the sheath. Um, and you're not going to feel that or detect that as you're carrying it or really as you draw it. When you want to draw it as it's dangling, you would just pull straight down. Very easy to do. And then I think one-handed you can probably even... Yeah, wriggle that back in. The dangler is stiff enough because of those reinforcement plates I added on it that you can actually push up against it and it'll, if you get it at the right angle, it resists uh, wanting to move. So you can, I think, operate this entirely one-handed, <clears throat> although it might take just a little bit of practice <coughs> Excuse me, to get very efficient with it. So, all right, colors are Black Basket Weave and Cryptek uh, Blood Red. That's what we got for you. So, two cool options. Uh, it's really handy to have a saw and a hatchet, obviously, when you're out in the brush. So, I uh, really like these both. And I hope these sheaths are also to Scott's liking. So, guys, let me know what you think of these. Um, there's a lot of different options for both of these items, obviously. Um, so, why don't you chime in below. Tell me what you think of these two particular options. And then, what is your favorite hatchet? and folding saw. Uh, I don't know too much about either world to be totally honest with you. I just haven't really uh, purchased or used many of either so uh, I'm definitely more of a knife guy but if you guys have any insight down below I love your opinions and I'm always kind of uh, keeping my eye on the market to see you know what I would buy if I do decide to buy either of these uh, and you know it's nice to be able to recommend good gear to people too so I really appreciate you guys always being willing to uh, to give your two cents and uh, help educate me and the other viewers on what the best options are out there. So give your opinions down below. And if you like these sheaths, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like the channel, subscribe. Let's get some conversations going on this gear. And uh, thank you for tuning in. So stick around for the next one. God bless.